Sa tuwing naririnig natin ang salitang nuclear energy, negatibo agad ang ating naiisip. Subalit kung ating pag-aaralan at iintindihin, ang nuclear energy na ito, maaari palang maging sagot sa mga pangangailangan ng ating bansa o maging sa ating pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay. Ngayong araw, pag-usapan natin ang naganap na signing of Memorandum of Understanding sa pagitan ng Philippine Nuclear Research Institute sa ilalim ng Department of Science and Technology at ng Department of Education sa ginanap na International Atomic Energy Agency Regional Workshop. Lay ng programang ito na ilapit sa mga guro at estudyante mula sa sekundarya ang kaalaman at konsepto ng nuclear science and technology. Halina't makinig at makialam dito lamang sa programang Hatid sa Inyo ay Bagong Kaalaman sa Mundo ng Science and Technology. Ito ang DOS-TV, Science for the People. Please give our viewers an introduction about yourself and the organization where you work with, which is the IADA. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jane Gerardo Abaya. I'm a geologist and since uh, 1994 I've been working for the International Atomic Energy Agency and I'm Filipino. Okay. <laughs> so in the work, my work at the IAEA, I am responsible for the technical cooperation program for some of the countries in Asia and the Pacific. Mm -hmm. And the IAEA is the UN organization that is responsible for uh, science and development. Mm -hmm. So its mandate under its mandate on atoms for peace and development. Pero paano kayo napunta sa IAEA? I used to work for the Philippine National Oil Company for the geothermal energy development okay. and at the time I was uh, using stable isotopes for understanding the dynamics and flow of uh, water. It started with cold water and then it became uh, for uh, volcanic systems and mm -hmm. geothermal systems and isotope hydrology was the field that I was dealing with and mm -hmm. it involves uh, stable isotopes and that is relevant to the work of the IAEA so uh, in 1994 I was taken in as a staff uh, to do isotope hydrology mainly for geothermal systems mm -hmm. and for which the Philippines is a major producer mm -hmm. in the world and now we are conducting the regional workshop on curriculum development of nuclear SNP for the secondary schools. Can you please give us a brief background about this workshop? Yeah, this workshop is a launching workshop actually for a four-year uh, project that was approved by the IAEA for mm -hmm. technical cooperation in Asia and the Pacific, so Southeast Asia and the Middle East. And it's a four-year uh, project in order to uh, introduce systematically nuclear science and technology in secondary schools. So okay two years, at least two years, before the young student goes to the university. Uh, it starts from the pilot phase that we did from 2012 to mm -hmm. 2017, when uh, the discussions with some member states uh, uh, reflected that there is a uh, need to enhance the interest on STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm -hmm and uh, nuclear science is very much a part of these STEM fields. And there is a dwindling interest in STEM fields, which is actually very important for innovation and development. At the same time, we were also interested in the sustainability of nuclear science and technology, and above all, to demystify 
nuclear science and technology in daily lives and what way to introduce it uh, especially through uh, education mm -hmm. and particularly uh, to enhance the interest of the young generation for science through nuclear science which is really a, a very uh, interesting field yes. and hopefully with that interest it will also uh, catalyze them to be more interested towards a let's say uh, university education and eventually um, a, a profession in mm -hmm. that field mm -hmm. but at the same time it's also to give facts and uh, and the proper information and learning related to nuclear science which is really mostly misunderstood yes. uh, because of lack of information and uh, so even if the young student uh, decides to go to humanities or arts uh, which are equally uh, important mm -hmm. uh, at least they will have a better understanding and knowledge mm -hmm. about what nuclear really is which mm -hmm. is really uh, you know it affects the daily lives in so many ways. Yes, and um, can we uh, just make uh, some clearance? This is not your first workshop. Uh, this, is, this, this is our first workshop to launch for this project. project, for this project. Yes. But prior to this, uh, in the last four or five years, we have had a series of uh, activities mm -hmm. to pilot test the approach. And Philippines has been selected as one of the four pilot countries together with Malaysia, Indonesia, and United Arab Emirates. And at the time, we, we piloted the different activities that might be uh, helpful to introduce nuclear mm -hmm. science and technology and to see whether there is really interest in the students and above all to the teachers who will be delivering it. And it was found to be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, the approach that we employed also was found to be uh, cost effective in the sense that the IAEA supported the training of some of the teachers from these pilot countries and uh, the teachers have trained other teachers mm -hmm. at, the, at the end of their, of their training, after their training, and these teachers have trained other students mm -hmm. and at the end of the pilot program uh, it had really a multiplier effect. Uh, we've reached out to more than uh, 24,000 students. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes, within a period of 12 to 16 months. Mm -hmm. So aside from this factor, what really inspires the IAEA to conduct this kind of workshop? It's really uh, because it reaches out to the young generation, to mm -hmm. the next generation, which is really the responsibility yes. of, of, I think, any adult. Mm -hmm. uh, to prepare the future. Uh, aside from that, it's really to impart knowledge, knowledge which is uh, valuable and which has not been well understood and which has not been fully utilized. Yes. And uh, you will see in the program of the IAEA technical cooperation with all its member states, we have nuclear applications in health, in agriculture, in the environment, in uh, in uh, water resources, in air pollution, mm -hmm. to understand many of the processes which are really complex and to be able to do proper decisions mm -hmm. about uh, the management of the resources and uh, to even uh, for health applications, the proper way to treat many of those uh, examples. Uh, but yet, uh, that's not so known to the general public. Yeah and it's important for mm -hmm. people to know about it in order for them to use it better. Mm -hmm. So prior to this project, you've done um, some initial activities here in the Philippines. Yes. Can you cite some of this? Yes, uh, capacity building, so workshops with teachers. We have sent uh, experts okay. uh, to the Philippines. At the same time, the Philippines has its own set of experts already mm -hmm. and have been uh, uh, doing a lot of outreach also to the different sectors mm -hmm. uh, for the use and application of nuclear technology uh, and so uh, with that uh, the use of the national expertise and the international expertise okay. with the support of the IAEA it has enriched the different uh, activities and uh, we have captured them and now it's ready also to be replicated to mm -hmm. other countries that's mm -hmm. why 
this uh, regional project has been developed and it all started with just four pilot countries and now some uh, 19 countries are in this workshop, the Philippines included. So for today's workshop or for this week workshop, what are the countries uh, will be participating on uh, today's or this week? I think this week. This week, yes, yes. yes. We have uh, right now uh, next door. Okay. <laughs> we have 19 countries. 19. Ninth. Uh, sorry, excuse me. 18 countries coming from Southeast Asia to the Middle East, mm -hmm. and that is the region covered by the IAA Technical Cooperation in Asia and the Pacific. So we have a uh, a good range of countries, all mm -hmm. 19 of 18 mm -hmm. of them. And during the workshop, you've launched the regional or IAEA Regional Technical Cooperation Project. Yes. Okay. Yes. Can you please give us an overview of this? Yes, it's the launching, uh, and it, it involves a thorough discussion with uh, all the participating member states of mm -hmm. the IAEA, both from the education sector and the nuclear sector. Mm -hmm. It's the first time. I think that uh, there is this systematic approach mm -hmm. where both the education and the nuclear sectors are working together for a common goal uh, for uh, introducing in education for the secondary school mm -hmm. uh, uh, students. And uh, we are also planning for national activities that can be supported by the IAA Technical mm -hmm. Cooperation Program as well as for the regional activities that uh, will have to be implemented in order to help capacity building primarily of teachers as trainers of other teachers in the countries and then of students mm -hmm. to be able to deliver uh, the complex concepts of uh, nuclear science and technology uh, from theory to application yes. Uh, confidently in the classrooms and also to their peers mm -hmm. and hopefully to uh, then of course to enhance the interest of uh, the students mm -hmm. for the future for the applications and interest and understanding of what nuclear really is. Mm -hmm. So different countries, different problems. <laughs> certainly, <laughs> yes. certainly, yes. So what are the problems that are really needed to be addressed? Uh, the common uh, problem is the dwindling interest on science and technology uh -huh. and that's why I think globally there is a, uh, a movement to support and enhance uh, visibility of STEM, science, technology, engineering and math, mm -hmm. primarily because uh, this is also related to development and innovation and, uh, and if there is really a strong interest mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. enhance fully development. Mm -hmm. uh, science, technology, engineering, mm -hmm. and math are critical uh, mm -hmm. components in order to support that. Uh, in addition, mm -hmm. now the UN has launched the Sustainable Development yeah. Goals. Mm -hmm. And all of those goals, uh, if not the majority of them, require uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm -hmm. And, and that's a common uh, mm -hmm. factor in mm -hmm. all of these participating countries. Um, uh, the, the other part is, uh, of course, the interest to pursue development. So aside from dwindling interest in STEM fields in the next generation, it's also to uh, um, the interest of the different countries to further develop. So these two together have to go hand in hand in order to support uh, the common targets of the countries yes. and here a nuclear science and technology being part of stem mm -hmm. has a, a niche mm -hmm. to play okay mm -hmm. so particularly here in the philippines with the collaboration of course with the department of education with the philippine nuclear research institute so what are we expecting or after this event what are the expected outputs oh yes uh, so now, in fact, as we are discussing mm -hmm. next door, they're discussing the delegates uh, of the different sectors, mm -hmm. including the sectors of the Philippines, are discussing what are the uh, activities that will uh, promote, let's say, uh, ensure capacity building first of mm -hmm. the teachers, mm -hmm. first and foremost, what are the resources, materials for teaching that can help demonstrate the concepts in a modern, exciting interesting manner that is also 
adapted to the current uh, modern society, mm -hmm. especially the youth. They have the they have uh, modern technology. How this can be mirrored? What are the uh, activities that should uh, be done? Mm -hmm. Not only one activity, but sustained activity uh, to be done at the national level and then at the regional level in order to produce as an output well-informed, confident teachers to teach the concepts, materials that can help them uh, introduce the concepts. Materials, I'm talking about experiments, mm -hmm. uh, uh, lesson exemplars, and we have seen excellent examples from the Philippines. Uh, also demonstration tools, also extracurricular activities that will help engage the, the students mm -hmm. uh, both intellectually and physically and also uh, their interest uh, in order to, to find the topic interesting. Mm -hmm. So those are the critical outputs that we would like to see. And of course, but it should be done in a sustained manner. We will also evaluate their effectiveness, continue to improve. And within the next four years, we hope to reach a good number of students in the different countries mm -hmm. so at this point in time uh, do you have any future plan to still stress the awareness and understanding on about nuclear and atomic or nuclear science and atomic it's a uh, it should be a sustained mm -hmm. effort mm -hmm. and uh, it should be coming from uh, all possible uh, beneficiaries okay. uh, of the society it's important to uh, have a clear understanding of the facts in order to have a, a good, let's say, approach yeah. uh, to it based on facts, based on scientific facts. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, it's also important to inspire uh, young minds. When you inspire them, mm -hmm. they really become very, very creative. Mm -hmm. And I think through this project, we have the opportunity to do that. All of that can be done effectively if there is a good partnership in all sectors of society. The media, for example, the yeah. science and technology, the education sector, the general public, because without the other, it can't work. Nowadays, the society has to be uh, inclusive. One helps the other in its own way, but all together moving in in a unified direction, in a homogeneous direction. And I think in this case, our target beneficiaries are the young generation to be more interested in science mm -hmm. for the future. Mm -hmm. Science for the people. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Yes, 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 indeed. Do you have any final message to our televiewers? Thank you, yes. I think it's a very uh, good moment that there is a good cooperation amongst the different sectors the scientific, the educational, and also the general sector for a good understanding. But what is important is to support the young generation, to support them to really be creative in a very uh, a positive, effective manner. We have seen excellent examples. Today we have heard from Hillary, the winner of yeah. Breakthrough. She has touched many uh, people. I'm sure each one of us in the room has been touched emotionally by the ideas because it's not just the science and but the message that the science brings is really very profound mm -hmm. and we hope to have many more of those uh, inspired young people mm -hmm. and we hope that the older generation uh, can also uh, be have an important role to play in order to help this new set of young adults Thank you. Thank you so much, Mom. Thank you. Narito ang latest update kay Tropical Depression Basha. 
Kaninang alas 7 ng umaga ay huli na mataan si Basyang sa layong 310 kilometers west-southwest ng Dumaguete o 255 kilometers south ng Cuyo Island sa Palawan o nasa gitna na Cuyan ng Sulu Sea. Ang may taglay pa rin lakas ng hangin si Basyang na umaabot ng 45 kilometers per hour malapit sa gitna at pagbukso na umaabot ng 60 kilometers per hour. Si Basyang ay patuloy na kumikilos pa Anduran Timog Kanduran sa bilis na 26 km per hour. Kung hindi po magbago ang uh, tinatahak na direksyon at ang bilis ni Basyang, inaasahan po na in 24 hours, si Basyang ay nasa may 190 km west-southwest ng Puerto Princesa, Palawan o nakatawid na po ng Palawan dyan sa may West Philippine Sea. And in 48 hours, si Basyang ay inaasahan nasa may 70 km west ng Pag-asa Island Diyan po sa may West Philippine Sea o nakalabas na ng Philippine Area of Responsibility. And in 72 hours, si Basyang ay inaasahan po nandyan na sa may 530 kilometers west-northwest ng Pag-asa Island o nasa coast na po ng Vietnam. Nakataas pa rin ang Tropical Cyclone Warning Signal Number 1 sa buong Palawan kasama na ang Kalamian Group of Islands at ang Cuyo Group of Islands. At ang uh, Tropical Cyclone Warning Signal Number 1 sa may uh, ibabang, ibabang bahagi ng Negros Oriental at Occidental at uh, ilalang bahagi ng Gamboga del Norte ay binabana po. Magkakaroon pa rin ng kalat-kalat hanggang sa malawakang katamtaman hanggang sa may kalakasang mga pagulan sa buong Palawan at sa may Western Visayas. Samantala magkakaroon naman ng mahina hanggang sa may katamtamang mga pagulan dyan sa ibang bahagi ng Visayas, sa Bicol Region, sa Buanga Peninsula, sa Hilagang Mindanao at sa Caraga. Yung mga kababayan po natin nakatira sa mga flood-prone at landslide-prone areas sa mga lugar na ito ay binabalaan pa rin laban sa mga pusinding mga pagbaha at pagguho ng lupa. Hindi pa rin po pinapayagang pumalaot ang anumang uri ng sasakyang pantagat sa buong Palawan kung saan nakataas ang Tropical Cyclone Warning Signal Number 1 Samantalang meron din tayong gale warning uh, dyan sa may northern na uh, sa may seaboard ng northern Luzon at sa may eastern seaboard ng central Luzon at ng Visayas at sa eastern seaboard ng southern Luzon. Posible po ang pag-landfall ni uh, Basyang dyan sa may katibugang bahagi ng Palawan mamayang gabi po. Ito na po ang huling landfall ni Basyang at uh, tulad ng naipakita kanina sa ating forecast track, si Basyang ay nasa ng lalabas ng Philippine Area of Responsibility bukas ng hapon. DOS TV would like to thank Filipino Creazione de Mano Incorporated. Visit their showroom at Ground Floor Lobby, PSM BFI Building, 318 Santon Road, West Crame, San Juan City. CITAV, the world's leading source of reliable and authoritative news, views, and analysis on information about science and technology for global development. Visit their website at www.citav.net. Baon-baon nga ng mga guro at estudyanteng lumahok sa event ang mga bagong kaalaman tungkol sa nuclear science. Tiyak excited silang ipamalita na ang exciting lesson na ito magiging parte na ng kanilang curriculum. Bukas pag-uusapan naman natin ang isa pang konseptong palaging may negatibong pananaw mula sa karamihan, ang radiation. Masama nga ba ito sa katawan? Paano natin ito magagamit sa pang-araw-araw na buhay? Ako po, si Jel Miranda. Abangan ang isa pang muling siksik sa kaalamang talakayan bukas, dito pa rin sa DOS-TV, Science for the People.